From WLWT, this is Issues. Well, hello everyone, I'm Curtis Fuller and welcome to Issues. Today we are going to start the show by talking about something uh, that you hear a lot about in terms of problems. Now we talk about solutions. That is called at-risk young people and we know that many are at risk and so what are some of the solutions well one solution is going to start on the 30th it is called levelin trade academy and here with me to talk a little bit more about that troy holmes senior and troy holmes jr and welcome to the program thank, thank you, you Curtis. Thank, you. thank you for having us so let's you know the, just that term at risk um some can see it as a negative some can see it as um as just targeting the, the challenge. What do you, when you think at risk, what, what does that mean? At risk, in my definition, is individuals, children, young teenagers, even young adults that don't have guidance, uh, they don't have any type of mentoring individuals in their lives, so they are particularly depending on the streets to raise them and they're at risk because the streets are not going to give you what you need in a positive way. And so y your solution is to say, well, let's let's teach them a trade. Yes, sir. All right. Talk a little bit about that. Uh, well, uh, Leveling Trade Academy will, uh, first of all, uh, train veterans. We're looking to train veterans to become the instructors. OK, and in return, these veteran instructors will teach the civilian males and females ages 13 to 27 uh, professional painting, drywall, carpentry, flooring, carpentry, and handyman services. We will also do character development, social awareness, anything. Anything that I know that I've learned through childhood versus being in the military I'm a, or a veteran of the Army and the Air Force. So anything I've learned in those places, um, something as simple as how to correctly iron your clothes, how to groom yourself correctly, how to uh, tie a tie, you know, those simple things, you know, whatever I have, I'm going to give away. So take me through the process. Someone comes in, um, is this a, an eight week program, 12 week program? How does this, how, how do I go in? How do I get out? Well, coming in, uh, first of all, making sure that you're eligible. Uh, we, this being a second chance program, we will deal with felons, okay, non-violent felons for sure. Each felon case is going to be on a case-by-case basis. Uh, so if you're a violent felon, we'll see how long ago you committed your crime, you know, and see where you are and, you know, just see where you've been in the last five to ten years and what you've been doing. Now when you come in and you get registered and everything and you start to get the criteria, we will teach these trades to you and painting and carpentry are going to be the longer courses because there's so many things involved you know you got interior painting exterior painting you know you have carpentry in reference to rough carpentry then you have finished carpentry there's codes that go along with carpentry so that's that process there is going to be a little longer so painting I've, I've actually put a time frame of 18 months on there before you can get your certification you know, and carpentry, more like two years. Yes. So what, what will your role be in this, uh, JR? Uh, JR. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, my biggest thing that I want to do is be someone that's close to them in age that they can relate to and make them feel comfortable and build their confidence as far as where they're going and getting away from where they have been and understand there is a light at the end of the tunnel. Hmm. Okay. Um, t tell me, tell me about your your background. Some of the things that you've been in involved in yourself. Myself, uh, well, f I started working when I was fourteen, uh, cutting grass, of course, just like to most make of a, us, yeah, right? yeah. yeah. Like uh, so I did that, uh, contracting services. Started out sweeping, got into heating and air, which wasn't as good as or as easy as I thought. Uh, so I ended up doing plumbing. So I've worked for a plumbing company for about five years now. Uh, I've also been a uh, high school varsity baseball coach mm -hmm. uh, in a local, in the area high school around here. Right. Because so often people are, will, will say, hey, you know, uh, people need to go to college. But the reality is not everyone is cut for college. 
Um, and what we're finding, you go back years ago, the yes. trades were very dominant. Yes. Sort of went by the wayside, and now people are saying, let's bring them back. Yes. I attended the University of Cincinnati Raymond Walters Division um, many years ago. I didn't hang in there. Uh, I joined the military. And I did my time in the Army and Air Force doing Desert Storm. Uh, the military is not for everyone. College is not for everyone. But I always knew that because I had a trade, I could always fall back on it. And I've been falling back ever since. But it has kept me self-sufficient. And it has given me ability to, to eat, mm -hmm. you know, and keep shelter. And uh, I am living proof that this program will work because of the number of years that I've stayed in the contracting and working on commercial and residential properties for different companies and different owners. And, and, and again, the reality is that the, this is not just a feel good, this is you're actually trying to get them their certification, right? Yes, sir. Because that's important. I mean, yes, just, just saying we're going to take care of at-risk people and at, after 12 months they'll be feeling better and right. sounding right. better. Right. Uh, ultimately, the certification is key. Yes. Certifi the certification is key. Uh, we will m have our specs mandated off of the local unions, mm -hmm. the painting union, drywall unions, the carpentry unions. Um, there's specified 144 hours of on-site hands-on training versus 160 hours of classroom instruction. So whatever the, the local unions mandates are, that's what we're going to base our certifications on. Mm -hmm. And also, once an individual has gotten the criteria, get their certification, if they choose to open up their own business, we have an entrepreneurship program after the actual training to where they can come out and be self-sufficient and run their own business. Uh, talk about uh, some of the support you're getting, um, partnering with yes. various groups. Um, first of all, like I spoke of, I am a contractor, so Leveland Trade Academy has a partnership with Homes by Troy. That's my contracting company. Also with the Veterans Workforce Development, um, which is located in Ohio, means jobs. Habitat for Humanity, people working cooperatively, Easter Seals, and Rescue Temple Church of God in Christ. Mm -hmm. uh, those are the partnerships that we have. Also with the Juvenile Diversion, we have a support ship with the Juvenile Diversion Department over on Auburn Avenue with the juvenile, um, I'd say, children. Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay, yes, I understand. So. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and so, just a couple other quick questions. Um, uh, you will be based at the Sentinel yes. uh, facility, uh, Sentinel uh, Police Association yes. uh, headquarters, which is over on Central uh, Parkway. So, how, how does one get in contact with you? How, how if, if I'm interested in this or if I know someone that this would uh, be appropriate for, either one of you could. Well, they can uh, actually reach out by via email. The email address is Lev Trades to Learn. That's L E V T R A D E S, the number two, mm -hmm. in the word learn, L E A R N, at mail.com. Or they can call the school, and the number is area code 513 903 8457. Mm -hmm. And if we're not able to answer, please leave us a message. We will contact you back. This starts, uh, give me the date when this, when this starts again? May 30th. May 30th. Uh, th th cost, is there a cost if I'm... If this I'm is tuition free to all students, mm -hmm. all right? Uh, we... 13 and up. 13, 13. 13 to 27 starting out. Okay. If funding gets to be more prevalent, then we'll take the age limit up, you know, higher. Because there is, I've had individuals that are in their 30s and 40s wanting to come to the school. Mm -hmm. But for right now, because we're starting at ground zero, those are the age limits that we're going to uh, deal with first. Okay. Give, give the number one more time before we... 513-903-8457. Uh, mm -hmm. And we are currently taking tax-deductible donations to help sponsor um, the individuals that are in class to keep our lights on and so that we can uh, actually keep pulling and pulling more individuals in. Okay. The more funding we have, the more individuals we'll be able to teach hmm. and instruct. Okay. Hey, that sounds good. Well, good luck to both of you. Thank, Thank you, you, sir. Thank you for coming on. <laughs> All right. Oh, and we will be back in a moment.
Welcome back, everyone. I'm Curtis Fuller. We are going to shift gears now and talk about an exhibit uh, that is coming to the uh, area. Actually, today, as you watch this, the uh, exhibit will be there today. It's called Victory of the Spirit. And with me to talk a little bit about that, Jimmy Bolden and also Rabbi A.B. Ingber. Uh, first of all, welcome to the program. Thank you, you know, Curtis. Delight to be you. here. Thank you. So, you know, when you told me about this, I, I immediately said, well, we have to tell people about this. It is called Victory of the Spirit, but Nevo Afek, is, is that correct? That's correct. Um, is the artist. That being said, that's just the, the start of it. The artist is blind. Tell me a little bit about the, why don't, why don't you start by telling me a little bit about this, this exhibit? Well, this is going to be um, uh, a very special exhibit. Uh, it's, it's an international exhibit. This is what we're considering it. And this young man uh, is uh, legally blind and also on the autism spectrum. Mm. And his work is uh, absolutely uh, amazing, absolutely amazing. And we at the uh, at Art Beyond Boundaries had the good fortune of having it brought to us by my dear friend and um, steering committee member, <laughs> Rabbi uh, A. B. Ingber. I, I was just uh, amazed when I when I heard this story. But tell me a little bit about a little bit more about the artist. So this this young man Nevoafek is uh, now 19 years old. Mm. Uh, born as one of uh, triplets in a southern town in Israel, uh, in Eilat, on the Gulf of uh, Aqaba. And um, early on uh, in his life, uh, he was diagnosed to be on the autism spectrum, highly functioning, but on the autism spectrum. And then around the age of 12, uh, developed an illness that left him legally blind. And so he had seen the world, had, in a sense, encountered the world in his own way. And a few years after that, he announced that he wanted to start painting, legally blind on the autism spectrum, and he says he wants to paint. The beauty of his family, the beauty of the support in the community around him is if that's what he wants to do, let's let him express himself in that way. And so he came to uh, become quite accomplished as a painter. And the beauty really of him being here is that on this past Thursday, he opened an exhibit at the United Nations. Mm. And through mutual friends, I said, you know what? If he can be at the United Nations, <laughs> then he deserves to be at Art Beyond <laughs> to be Boundaries in, here to be in, in Cincinnati. Cincinnati. <laughs> I, I, I mean, just the story itself speaks volumes about how <laughs> Art Beyond Boundaries, I mean, how perfect for, for your, your, your location, because it says there are no boundaries. Well, this is uh, one of those almost once in a lifetime opportunities to, well, as you know, the world in which we live is, is a scary place these days. And um, we're hoping that by doing this kind of, uh, of an exhibit, uh, we can make a small contribution to turning the needle back toward the center. And as as, as uh, Jimmy likes to say, and of course I'm, I'm so proud to serve on the uh, board of, of the gallery, the issue is not disabilities, the issue is abilities. I, I, at age 19, I was wondering if I had a date on Saturday night. That was the sum total probably of my <laughs> life. And here's a young man who's exhibited the United Nations and then right. here in Cincinnati, Ohio. So it's the gifts we each can bring and the sooner we recognize that, I think the better we will be as a society. Yeah, absolutely. I, I mean, when, <clears throat> and I was thinking as you were coming on here, um, um, so much dysfunction going on in the world, yes. uh, so many things that separate us. Uh, I was hearing the reports now, uh, 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 anti-Semitic uh, things occurring in parts of the world. I mean, we, we, we continue to hear about what the, the divide instead of what brings us together. And, and what better thing than art? Well, when you think about it, if really to a person of faith, we're created in the image of God, 
then God looks like nevo afek. Mm. I mean, th th that's just the corollary of that expression. You can't say nevo afek was created in the image of God, but God looks different than that. Then God must look like that. And the characteristics and the resonance of God in our lives does not have to be through this Western image of what perfection is. That, in that excluded really the three of us. Mm. Uh, but rather that it has to be an encompassing image. And when a person can literally touch me, touch the people who will come this afternoon in an artistic way, and he can't even see the totality of his canvas. Mm. When he paints, he paints two inches from that canvas. He cannot see the totality of his image. Mm. I'm gonna take a break, then we'll come back. We'll give some of the specifics on time and, and the specific location in just a minute, back in a minute. Welcome back everyone, I'm Curtis Fuller. Uh, we're talking about an exhibit uh, that uh, starts uh, today, does it start today or it, today? Yeah, it technically starts today. Um, and uh, the artist will be there. It's called Victory of Spirit. Here with me to talk a little bit more about this, uh, Jimmy Bolden and also uh, Rabbi Ingber. Um, now he will be here today, but the exhibit runs through, you were saying? Through the end of May. Through the end of May. At the Art yes. Beyond Boundaries. Talk a, talk a little bit about time and give the address, even though people probably know where your studio uh, is. We, we like to consider ourselves the light at the top of Main Street. <laughs> <laughs> 1410. Oh, only he could put it that way. <laughs> 1410 Main Street and the historic uh, uh, arts district uh, of uh, OTR. You were making and it an art district before it became an art district. Well, we've, we're, we're veterans in the neighborhood, let's yeah. say that. Yeah. Uh, this past February, we celebrated 11 years in this, in the same location. Mm -hmm. And this is the 70th exhibit. Yes. Wow. Yeah. wow. I, I think about your studio, I think about um, the ensemble theater that sort of uh, really, s you guys have stuck through, uh, ensemble theater's been there a little bit longer, but yeah. Um, really stuck through the hard times. It, over the Rhine didn't always look like it looks today. Um, always a great community, uh, a charming community, but there, it had its struggles probably when you first started. Well, um, Cincinnati is known as a city of immense arts culture, but as an arts marketplace, it has yet to uh, live up to its potential, I would mm, say. It's yeah. the best way to put that. And we, uh, we uh, <laughs> I'm probably putting the cart before the horse. He didn't know I was gonna ask him. I, I wanna make sure that you don't get edged out of there, because as the growth of Over the Rhine, I don't wanna see people who've been there for years. I wanna make sure that you stay there, that's not a... Well, we... Um, have you ever tried to move his Cadillac? <laughs> <laughs> Fortunately, we, we own this space. We are, we're not renters. We, so in order to, uh, to get us out of there, I mean... They got to buy you. Yeah. Okay. All right. All right. It was a great investment 11 years ago. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yes. So again, it starts at two. Is, it, is, is there a cost to this? No, absolutely free. We'll have uh, uh, valet parking. Um, uh, light bites, you know, come and enjoy uh, the art and meet the artist. Mm. And we, also, we also will have a, a video of the artist working. Oh, okay. And yeah. to yeah. see yeah. him at work in that uh, studio, mm. two inches from the canvas astounding. is just, it, it's astounding. It's yes. astounding. astounding. It's pretty amazing. Yes. Well, will he will he speak at all? Will he, I mean, when, when I say will he have any discussion with or just... Uh, private interaction. With I, him. I don't know. I mean, the truth is that I don't know. I want to be respectful sure. of, of him in that kind of a space. Though his, his mother, who is accompanying him, I believe that she will bring a few, at least she will bring a few words of greeting mm -hmm. and thankfulness to the city of Cincinnati for welcoming them from the United Nations. Right. And uh, we, we will make it 
you know, with the Nevo Affect Day with the whereases and oh, good, you know, good proclamation from from the city of Cincinnati. Right. Yeah. I th I think it brings awareness to to art in general. I think it brings a, a great awareness to autism and and again this this notion don't focus on the the limitations and the disabilities. But I I love that focus on the abilities that exist. Now, how did you get involved in this? Has anybody on this planet <laughs> ever said no to Jimmy Bolden? That's true, that's true. Uh, you know, after so many, uh, really, I'd say almost decades of yeah. bringing food, clothing, and toiletries down to over the Rhine in our Operation Warm-Up, and all these programs working with the drop-in center, breakfast every, serving breakfast every Sunday morning for 15 years, to be asked to come back to Over the Rhine to bring art to the community, oh my God, what a, what a tremendous gift for me. I, I'm really delighted. Yeah, and, and people should know, y y you're a photographer, you're a great photographer. Um, well, thank you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> do you still do a lot of photography now? As much as I can. Mm -hmm. yeah. Photography, I eat, breathe, think, sleep photography. Um, and uh, I would do, I, I've been fortunate enough to make a living, you know, as a, as a photographer. And um, it's something that, that I would do if I didn't get paid for it. Are, are you old school or you, 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 uh, do you like the new technology? I mean, it makes it well, easier, but. Uh, it's, the, the, old, the old school is the art of photography. I still have a dark room in my basement. Mm. Yeah. It'll always be there. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> All right. So, uh, Victory of the Spirit will be uh, today at uh, beginning at two o'clock. It's free. What an exciting uh, opportunity to to come on out and to over the Rhine. I'm going to stop by. Uh, look forward to stopping by and, and, and seeing the exhibit. Thank you, Curtis. Thank you. It's always good to see you. We're Thanks, going to take Curtis. a break and we'll be right back. Always a lot of interesting things to talk about. Uh, the, the, the trade uh, school concept is an interesting one and you'll be hearing much more about that. And again, today, a victory of the spirit. Uh, be sure to, if you have a chance, uh, check it out two to five o'clock at Art Beyond Boundaries and Over the Rhine. I'm Curtis Fuller, have a nice day. <laughs>